Ladies and gentlemen, it is RPT, season number eight, episode 106. It is Friday, 17 November, year of our Lord, 2021. Last show of the year is coming up, man. Last show, Salt Lake City. Very last show of the tour, man. I, I got senioritis, bro. I got seen. It's like they dragging me across the finish line. I'm too old for this shit. Uh, last show, baby. Tomorrow, November 18th, Wise Guys Comedy Club. That's it. I have one tour date. Uh, Chingo Chats has its own RSS feed. Do not forget, you know, you can get each show on its own RSS feed. If you don't like the political stuff, you know, get you some Chingo Chats. Go subscribe to that show on Apple and Spotify. But if I were to believe it, uh, the FJB shirts are now available. Limited time, ChingoBling.com. That red, though. This is a little cardinal. I don't know what color this is, man, but, you know, I'm rocking. Um, We have some of these. I'm going to have to go do inventory after this. <clears throat> All my small business owners, man. Y'all already know, bro. There's so many little tasks and things that come with all the different projects. Yeah. Um, and I want to make some Vamos Brandon shirts. I was at Michael Berry's birthday party. I saw so many Let's Go Brandon shirts and Vamos Brandon shirts. That's badass. Did you yeah. wear that one by chance? Nah, I went, you know, kind of dressed up a little bit. You know, a little, you know we were shooting um, the video sh- shots for the video. They were all, they were, they were tripping on your, on your drip. They were slipping on your drip. A little bit. You know what I'm saying? Vamos Brandon. Support the free speech and support the content, man. But if I were to believe it, bye. How do you do that? You sign up at patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales. We set a goal of reaching 1,000 patrons by the end of the year, by December 31st. That is six weeks from today. We're currently at 231 monthly patrons. Mm -hmm. This will help us create more content. You know, like new Chingo Bling music videos, new Chingo Bling music every month. I'm trying to drop a single a month in 2022. Some more sketches, some studio upgrades. We need a couple editors over here. Mm-hmm. Uh, we need a couple video guys, a couple, couple camera guys. And, of course, we want to do way more podcasting. And I've been pushing this, man. I cannot stress this enough. <clears throat> Sign up for the newsletter at chingobling.com because so many people are like, I haven't seen your posts in weeks. Where have you been? Bah, 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 bah. That's why you got to join the newsletter. That's it. And listen to the, to the podcast. Uh, don't forget, you get access to the Discord when you become a Thea member on Patreon. So, yeah, man, that is all the announcements we have today. That's it. And uh, go review the podcast. Before uh, you know you get any further of this, pause it or even just minimize it. Go to the Apple uh, section of the of the phone of the, of the podcast and give, give us a five-star review and a nice little rating, you know? Or if you don't want to write anything, at least give us five stars. Because we got an interesting email yesterday. I sent oh. you the screenshot of it, remember? Oh, yeah. Where I got to see how valid it is. But uh, it was something along the lines of, you know, the podcast is like number 40 in Mexico as far as like news commentary and like which is really it was that was a strange one and it's number 103 in Canada and 106 in the United States so I was like all right let me do some digging on the analytics and see how accurate that is because even being in the top 100 of podcasts especially in the news segment where there's so many other you know you got all the daily wire shows and all all these other you know network of of shows it's pretty pretty cool yeah human events yeah there's a ton yeah war rooms up there you know all, all those kind of shows man please look into that yeah, speaking of War Room, um, so today we're going to go through some of the topics on today's list, and we also have Steve Bannon, mm-hmm. we might want to touch on that. Yeah, yeah, but we'll get into whatever you got to chat about before we get to that list. <laughs> All right, so on today's show, Kyle Rittenhouse, closing statements. The prosecution and the defense mm-hmm. have done their closing statements. Have they given a, a verdict? Uh, tonight, today at 9 Eastern, what is that for us? Uh, is that right now? It's 11. I'm just trying to see if people are going to riot or not. Is, is Kenosha going to burn? Well, they already have. I think they deployed 500 National Guard. All because of fake news. All because of fake news. So man. we got to put National Guard in Kenosha, Wisconsin, because the fake news industry is just dividing the people. You know, he's a white supremacist. Yeah, man. He is a racist. He was out there hunting black people because that's what racist white people do. And it's like, no, he shot a couple white pedophiles, bro. That's it. He nailed it. That's Two weeks that, of a trial. That's it right there. That's all that happened. It was self-defense. Anyway, to, uh, today also we're talking about Anthony Fauci on The Daily. We have some audio clips. We're going to save that to the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, your favorite white Mexican, Beto. Actually, he's half, I believe. Yeah, Francis half. is half. Yeah, he's half. Beto. Announces Governor Run, and he wants to take your gun, so you're gonna have to take him. Tell him come and take it. I can't wait till you read the comment section of his YouTube video his announcement. 
Oh, man, I can't wait. Did he get ratioed? Everybody hit him with the thumbs down and shit? While they can, until they take it away. Yeah, they're going to take that away. Uh, shout out to Wesley Hunt. He announces his run for Congress, District 38. 38. Just ran into <clears throat> Wesley nice. at uh, Michael Berry's birthday party. It was lit. Um, OSHA and their poke mandates. Mm -hmm. They're mandating to the poke. Well, they're trying to, at least. But not going to happen. OSHA. Hmm. Okay, can't wait to dig into that because I know there's some legalities involved. So, have you been keeping up with the uh, Kyle Rittenhouse? I have, man. <clears throat> I've been watching most of of the trial that I can. It's like it's been over two weeks, I think, like ten or maybe fourteen days. And um, good. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, it's just been it's been. Have you been watching any of it just by chance? I know you yeah. probably don't have the time to watch a ton of it. I mean, I don't sit there and just binge watch it, like watch it from beginning to end. Yeah. I see all the highlights. I saw the um, how Binger, they've been clowning him. He's the uh, yeah, prosecutor. Finger. Prosecutor. He's been like holding up the gun, had his finger, finger all on the trigger. Mm -hmm. um, you know, very bad bad uh example of how to handle a gun yeah in a courtroom yeah especially when i think he was pointing in the direction of people too which is just like always treated as if it's loaded like that's just he's on some alec baldwin shit exactly right so it, you know and i summed it up with the the media is the enemy of the people yet again right if <coughs> if you go to any show that's mainstream or as we call it corporate media and you have the guy the the gauge guy gauge kurtz writes or whatever the fuck his name was the antifa dude uh -huh. that total antifa dude uh, the convicted felon, you know, the the, the list goes on. He and in Strahan in that video that we posted on the What Did He Said page gave him that that out of like, uh, you know, here you can say whatever you want, you know, you're not beholden to anything. And he just goes against everything that he said under oath. And and then they continue to perpetuate that yeah. idea. He said, uh, this boy Gage, man. So when you see him in the courthouse, he's one of the white boys, the Antifa boys that were out there burning and destroying Kenosha. Mm-hmm. Uh, so apparently what happened is there were um, some dudes that own a car lot <clears throat> and they they hollered at somebody was like, hey, man, you got a gun and all that. I, I want you to come and be like security so they don't burn up all our inventory of vehicles. And then homeboy must have called some of his homeboys. And next thing you know, you got like 10 white boys with guns looking like militia, yeah. probably to the to the average eye. And um, Lil Kyle was one of them. So Lil Kyle, 17, had his little AR. He's a uh, lifeguard. You know, he was helping some people with medical. Um, obviously, some people on the left, they don't want to hear that. They just already done heard active shooter. They done called him an active shooter on Good Morning America, bro. Yeah. How many lawsuits are they going to have? He's gonna be, this kid's going to be so rich. Like, remember that like, that little kid with the red hat that had the Indian yeah, the, was? Um, Covington kid. Covington kid, dude. Yeah. He's going to be twice as rich as that kid. I, I mean, I don't know. Only because look at what they're already doing. They made it to where big tech is making it to where you can't even chime in. You can't, like, type in certain stuff. Um, Kyle's mom had an account. She got super suppressed, banned, suspended, shadow banned, something where she was trying to raise money and she mm -hmm. was trying to tag the account that was trying to collect money. So meanwhile, all the uh, leftists that were burning up all the cities, all the anarchists, Antifa, uh, whatever you call them, you know, peaceful protesters. crash dummies, black block crash dummies, you know, uh, Bolshevik revolution, culture revolution. These are just very uh, useful idiots and they're crash dummies. <clears throat> so you had people like Kamala Harris bailing out the people that were burning up the cities all summer long, 2020. They were getting bailed out, slap on the wrist. They're not in the gulags. Right. The who's in the gulags right now? The January 6th people. They're the ones that in there with long beards and long hair, can't cut their hair, uh, can't speak to their family, haven't seen their family in a year, can barely get a hold of their lawyer. Uh, the congressman try to go in there and check in on them. They don't let them. So that's where we're at. 2021 America. If you go against the narrative... You know, you know some of the people that were at the January 6th, I'm sure it's individual cases. Some might have been, you know, rioting. Some might have, like, raised a fist at a cop. I don't know. It's all case by case, you know. But they're not getting due process, bro. They got them, like, locked away. Yeah. Meanwhile, you know, all these people that were burning up stuff. So this guy, Gage, he admitted on the stand, like, is that you pointing the gun at Kyle? Mm -hmm. Yes. And it wasn't until that you pointed your gun at him that he shot. 
He's like, yes. Yeah. And they're like, is this a picture of you getting shot? He's like, yes, that's my bicep getting obliterated, you know. And the first time they asked him, he said no. And then they repeated it. And again, as the video shows, it's not until he points his gun or you point your gun at him that he shoots. He's like, yes. In normal times, this case would have got thrown out. Yeah. It would have sure. got thrown out. And sometimes people like to argue like, man, if Kyle was black or Mexican, you know, if Kyle, if Kyle wasn't white, you know, if Kyle, this wouldn't even be a case. If Kyle was uh, Julio Rodriguez and he was in self-defense or whatever, they'd have been like, well, or uh, actually, no, he probably would have gotten in trouble, too, if he looked like he was on, in the, on the side of the right or the freedom and, yeah. and um, hey, don't destroy my city and on the side of law and order. But meanwhile, there's that kid in Dallas not too long ago, a couple weeks ago, that shot like four people in school, was out the next day, and I haven't heard anything since, honestly. But the narrative is, you know, white people got privilege. White people get away with shit. It, how many white boys are in a gulag right now? January 6th. What is this? Stalin style gulags, bro? Yeah. USSR type shit? You know, I, I've been kind of going down this rabbit hole of uh, there's that channel, uh, yeah. Valuetainment, with uh -huh. uh, Pat, uh, Patrick Bet, uh, Patrick Bet, Bet David. He's been for a while now, like talking to people that are full on communists and full on uh, revolutionaries and full on, like, there was this one. I, it, the podcasts are long. They're like an hour, hour and a half, kind of like ours. And I didn't think I'd be listening to it this long, but this guy that even looks like Karl Marx was going down this conversation about how uh, Stalin was actually a great man and all the things that he, he did. I couldn't... It was, like a, it, was like a car, it was like a terrible car crash. I couldn't stop watching. Like, I couldn't look away from it. And it's like midnight. This was like four days ago. I needed to be asleep already, but I just couldn't stop listening to this nonsense. And Patrick but David was like, you know, his family escaped, you know, communism. He's having these really interesting points. And he's just not, the, the guy's not flinching. And he's also just have very late, and he's a professor. He's a, he's a PhD. But the arguments are so lazy. I'm like, man, how many people are listening to this and really being convinced by what he's saying and thinking that like, oh, that's a great point. Like that's, Stalin is a great person. You don't, you don't think none of his students in, in the college are influenced by him? A hundred percent. All yeah. of them. All of them. Yeah. I, I told you, bro, one of my comedian friends, <clears throat> he was sitting there in the green room trying to make the argument for communism. And I was just like, Phew. that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. He was talking down on capitalism, bro. Wow. <clears throat> but, you know, that's what happens sometimes. You get sent to college. Yeah. And you hear a couple of little professors talk fly and, and source a couple things and they frame things a certain way and they start to persuade you. Hell, even Kanye, in some of these late interviews of late, he was some of the shit he was saying sounded very communist, mm -hmm. you know. But maybe he was just trying to think of this utopia type shit. But I, I don't know. I don't want to put words in his mouth. Yeah. Um, but the Kyle Rittenhouse situation is is interesting because you can look at it as like, bro, this is just a whole nother distraction. <clears throat> this is just a whole nother way to keep us divided. Have us arguing on social media. Yes. Um, I think it was Homeboy, the comedian from... Jim uh, Brewer. Yes. You Jim, saw that clip? Yeah. I was about to play it. Yeah. I think towards the end is where he was like really starting to make his point. Mm -hmm. But he's basically saying, man, it's a clown-ass world. They got us divided. This is just the newest little distraction where you got one side of the media, which is the majority. The majority is mm -hmm. Seth Meyers and Jimmy Kimmel and Trevor Noah and SNL and, you know, it's like... They run everything. That's you know, why. That's why. Hold on, real quick. That's why Kanye said when I said uh, George Bush don't care about black people, he says I never got canceled. He said because the media is controlled by the left and mm -hmm. they didn't like Bush either. Exactly. No, that the point of uh, shit. What did you say just before that? Sorry. No, 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 no. You're good. Um, the left. Oh, uh, well, Jim but, Brewer. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. The point of all that is that like it, people might think that we enjoy like we gleefully talk about how poor the left is doing or how poor their messaging is or how bad their ideas are and it's not really gleeful because when you talk about this kind of stuff at nauseum it's almost like do we really have to break this down slowly and repeatedly week after week for it to make sense to the people that aren't already big fans of this kind of show or of this particular show but it's because it's not fun all the time like it's really just like wow that's where in 2021 the greatest superpower to ever be you know established is with their citizens with their people with especially with their young people their educated people it's crazy it's scary and how you look at it so like you were just saying y'all think we want biden to fail y'all think we want harris to fail just so we could be like aha we own the libs and aha i told you so i was right no i want 
Joe Biden to be alert. I be praying that the White House don't drop the ball. Like, please keep everything intact. Like, God forbid, like my biggest fear is that y'all are controlled opposition. Um, y'all are asleep at the wheel. Um, inflation is through the roof. And every time we try to ask one of y'all what's the deal, y'all like, no, it's actually either not true or it's transient or it's good for you. It's a good thing. That's because you don't you normies don't understand supply and demand. So when the gas is high and inflation is up and there's scarcity and you know shelves are empty, and this is all actually a good sign. And it's because of the pandemic. And but 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 it's like, bro, Biden just met with she from the CCP. And it looked like a game of chess versus checkers. Mm -hmm. Y'all think I want to be on the side of checkers? Y'all think I want my leader to be up there sleepy and weak and, and asleep at the wheel and, and um, almost like they got blackmail on him and he's approaching she kind of like, hey, guys, we can be competition, but, you know, we just can't let it escalate too bad. It's like, oh, we done already has, bro. It's information war. It's culture war. It's economic war. You know what I'm saying? Trump was putting pressure on him with the tariffs. Trump was trying to, like, close the border, raise our wages, help our economy, bring back the manufacturing, bring back jobs. But we're living in a world where let's go after Steve Bannon. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He got too much of a voice. Uh, war room pandemic. He's activating too many listeners and, and they're getting a little bit too involved in politics and shit. So they taking people out. Why is the left so hell bent? On painting Joe Rogan as a fucking whatever, a weirdo, racist, white supremacist, anti-vaxxer. Yeah. Like, why are they like that? Uh, Michael Shea got into it with Tim Dillon. Oof, did you listen to that? I, I heard the clip you sent me. Okay. Uh, where Tim Dillon was replying, saying like, like, oh, you, you trying to call me out saying, oh, he's just part of the media now. He's like, bro, you were the one on NBC. Yeah. And also, what a dumb argument. Like, who isn't... I talk about this. I've been talking about this for years. Whether you're a screen printer or whatever you are, everyone's a part of the media. How else are you getting people to go to your business or know that you know about whatever you do? It, it's a part of media, right? But it was just a lazy... Also, I think the bigger, greater point that Tim was making was like, the schedule was lazy, and it wasn't funny. That's yeah, it. Yeah, I, yeah, that's his main point. But I feel like the undertone of the whole thing is... People Controlled like, opposition. Well, people like Michael Shea, who... You know, us comedians and entertainers, we've always been taught that, like, in order to really make it and for you to be validated, you got to be on um, SNL. Mm -hmm. That's the platform. That's the dream. You know, that's where Eddie Murphy came from and yada, yada. And it's like, no, that's where comedy goes to die. Yeah. You'd rather be free, independent, like Dave Portnoy or mm -hmm. somebody, Joe Rogan. Tim Dillon. Tim Dillon. Uh, Schultz. You'd rather... Like, not have a boss, have a podcast, be able to say what you want to say, have some free speech, and so on. Because when you're independent, and I don't know how far you listened into it, but Tim made a really good point. When you're independent, and you make it to a certain degree, and you have the money to say whatever you want, that's bad for the establishment. They don't want you to do mm -hmm. that. Just like more and more of these, like, great reset conversations, and the, you're, you'll have nothing, and you'll work. You know, the, there's, the, the, there's another one that Insider actually came out with that was like, you're not going to work anymore, people aren't going to want to work, and... It, it, it's it's a really dumb point, but the overarching point, I think, is that the more you don't work and don't want money and don't care for things, the more you rely on the government to just supply your stuff, the more you're just giving up all of your, your life. Build back better. Yeah. We've said it 50 million times. If, if you guys are new to the show, <clears throat> we always talk about um, Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum the party of Davos, you're going to start seeing these articles. They're trying to prime you while... While you have this metaverse headset on your face, they're going to be buying up all the land, buying up all the houses, owning everything, the biggest transfer of wealth. You will own nothing and you will be happy. So there's going to be these stories put out there where it's like work is for suckers. You know, you should have the freedom to, you know, not have to work. And this is a new, new normal, new yeah. lifestyle. Get you, collect your UBI, <laughs> eat your cricket pace. Don't forget meat is bad for the climate. Stay in your house because it's bad for the climate. You know what I mean? Put this QR code pass, whatever, fucking Vax passport, whatever kind of passport, you will be super surveilled. You will have no privacy and you will own nothing how many new normals are we going to go through in the in, you know in these 24 months it's well like, I, I miss the old normal boy. <laughs> i miss 2019 boy. so bad uh this is stephanie rule this might be i don't know if you saw this clip but she's uh reporting on or talking about the inflation i hope this is you say inflation's over six percent numbers we haven't seen in more than 30 years so 
How much higher can these prices go and when do you see them coming down? Well, listen, Willie, nobody knows exactly when they're going down, but you have to put all this in perspective. This inflation is not in isolation. And the government predicted it was going to be a challenging recovery, recovery all tied to covid. So it's why you see things like that expanded child tax credit. You've got the families of over 60 million kids on average getting $430 a month for people on fixed incomes, older people on Social Security. They're getting those fixed payments adjusted next year up 5.9 percent for inflation. And the dirty little secret here, Willie, while nobody likes to pay more, here on average, we have the money to do so. Household savings hit a record high over the pandemic. We didn't really have anywhere to go out and spend. And as we said a moment ago, we're expecting retail sales this holiday season to break records. For those who own their homes, the value of our homes are up. And while the stock market isn't the economy, you got over half of American households with some investment in the markets, and the markets have hit record highs. So we need to put all of this in perspective. This time last year, when you and I were talking, Willie, nobody had a vaccine. Now 200 million Americans do, and we're seeing this push of demand, and that's pushing up pricing. What a tone-deaf, dumb argument. Bro, these are the people, this is what they're trying to accomplish. What America used to be. You know what I'm saying? What the American dream used to be, like, one income, your mom could stay home, you know what I mean, help raise the kids. Like, the American dream, you could buy a house. All that shit is a wrap. If you ain't getting in now, you ain't, they ain't finna let you in. So these people, I want y'all to take a long, hard look at these people. What's her name? Stephanie Rule? Yeah. The establishment, the media, the party of Davos, they do not represent the working class or the blue-collar people. America first, populist, economic, nationalist. That's the type of shit that, that puts the people first. What these people are trying to do is make more programs, as you heard, more government spending, more programs, more socialism. Oh, we're going to hook you up with this. We're going to give you some of that. It's going to be our kids stuck paying for it. You know what I'm saying? Inflation about to get worse. They just finished telling you, lady, people are feeling the squeeze it, it ain't been like that since 30 years the pra the price of gas ain't been that high and i don't know how long cost of goods everything is going up and y'all sitting up here saying <laughs> yes but put it in perspective the stock market and covid bitch y'all made motherfucking covid <laughs> whoa yeah, i mean right. it came right. out of a lab anyway here's what i'm saying y'all exacerbated what came with this of course there's lots of viruses you didn't have sars mers you know ebola was out there a little bit measles mumps whatever there's all kinds of shit flu there's all kinds of shit out there and there's more to come because this ain't the last one that's gonna accidentally leak wink wink <laughs> um so my point is this they sure are riding this this covid thing boy they sure are utilizing it uh, um uh, last year, 200 million uh, Americans didn't have vaccines, and that's causing a supply. Lady, who watches it? I mean, like, y'all need to turn that off. Turn it off. They're not your friend. They're just there to confuse you, lie to you, and Scare put you at you. ease. They're there to put you at ease so you don't raise hell and start really paying attention to what's really going on. Yeah, we posted something on the What Did You Said page last night about California, which that's its own kind of place. If Texas is its own country, California is its own country, and we have completely diametrically opposed approaches to running those countries if they were right but um california i think what did they change hold on let me find it real quick it was the it was a vax mandate they're kind of going back on some things but uh because of the holidays you know uh malls and shopping centers have removed their mandates their mask mandates um i guess maybe their distancing mandates um and then the requirement in california yeah in la LA approves changes to vax mandate for indoor businesses. And then the age requirement to enter with a vax card, I guess this is all vax cards, it has changed from 5 to 12. So if you're 5 and older, it was 5 and up, now it's 12 and up. And then businesses are still are in violation, uh, can face up to $1,000, $5,000 fines. None of this makes sense. There, there are cases, there, everything is doubled what Florida's is. This is coming out now. So if I lived in California, I have a 13-year-old. So if, if my daughter says, hey, dad. Let's go get yogurt. Yeah, I want to go to the mall. Let's hit the food court. I'm going to have to be like, hey, pull out your Vax passport yeah. on your phone, mija. Yeah. Show them you got the jab, mija. Yes. That's how y'all want to live? There, there's a comedian. That, uh, 
shout out Leo Rich. He commented and said, I'm out here. I have no idea where I, quote, can go, facepalm. Uh, yep, LA County got the goons full force. Catch me outside. How about that? Um, we moved out of LA six months ago. Best decision ever. Uh, it, it's just, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Rogan tried to tell y'all. He said he saw the writings on the wall. Yeah, and it's not like y'all had to go to Austin, but y'all could have at least gotten out of there. Yeah, at least get out of LA County. Uh, but as y'all heard on our one of our previous episodes, uh, Cartelville, yeah. the documentary will show you that, hey, Cartel is in America now. <sighs> And uh, we don't have strong leadership at the time that will categorize them as a, as a terrorist groups. They too worried about the moms going to the school board. That's who they worried about. Merrick Garland and the DOJ has been weaponized by the Biden regime to go after people like Steve Bannon. Man, I saw Seth Meyers goofy ass on YouTube doing a whole thing about Steve Bannon. Like, uh, Steve Bannon, blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like. He played this one clip, right, where mm-hmm. Steve Bannon was turning himself in. Right. And he said, this about to be the misdemeanor from hell for y'all. He was saying, y'all done fuck with the wrong dude. And basically, he... Um, That's what he titled the podcast earlier. Oh, I, I've been tr- waiting for it to refresh, The bro. misdemeanor from hell? Yeah, I've been waiting to see it. But but Seth Myers was trying to clown because he played a clip of Steve Bannon on, on the steps of the FBI building saying... Um, There's no whining and crying in the war room. Stay on focus. You know, this is signal, signal not noise. that's noise. And he said, today on the show, we got Raheem Kassan. We got uh, Captain Bannon. whoop de woop woo right? I understood everything he was saying because I listened to the show. Yeah. Seth Myers is trying to make a joke. Oh, he's Captain Bannon now? No, that's his daughter, you idiot. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's letting y'all know, stay <laughs> tuned. We about to put up, <laughs> apply pressure. And what they're trying to get him on is when he was uh, on January 5th, he was saying things like, oh, heads are going to roll. Tomorrow's game day. Uh, it's going down. Ba 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 ba. To me, that ain't got shit to do with running inside a Capitol. Mm-hmm. To me, it's kind of him saying, oh, Pence, you know, Pence going to have to do the right thing. What's up with Mike Pompeo? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, what's up with Congress? Y'all already know uh, Ted Cruz and them are going to demand an audit. We just need a 10-day audit. Y- y'all stay calm. Tomorrow's game day. Heads are going to roll. It's going to be action-packed. They interpreted that as run up in there, act a fool, put on your little buffalo hat. And it, it's, it's so, it's so <laughs> it's stupid. So it's so dumb. stupid. It's, it's such so a waste dumb. of time. But hey, that's what happens in Soviet countries. And when you have communism and shit like that, cultural revolutions, they're called show trials. They just, almost like the Rittenhouse thing. Right. It's like they do it in front of everybody and there ain't shit you could do and they could railroad you. So once again, I've said it before, I'm glad I am not a white male. You know, I'd rather get called a coconut, but hey, white males right now. I'm which, by the y'all. way, we do need to change that on your Wikipedia. I need to change my entire Wikipedia. It's so There's so dumb. many things to do. And it is so annoying that I'm going to have to go on my Wikipedia and change it because one of you little keyboard gangsters then hopped on there and put a bunch of goofy ass shit. You know, Shapiro was on uh, Rogan last week and, you know, it was a great episode. I'm a fan of Shapiro, uh, even if I don't agree a thousand percent with everything. But um, him, you know, talking to Joe and Joe always, you know, walking the line, like walking the center line and trying to make sense of both and trying to make sense of a left argument and a right argument always enjoyable i almost uh, he can almost do and say no wrong to me but when you have people like rogan who have shapiro on and then you have people like tim Dillon, you know a self-proclaimed fat pig gay guy who's also again going against the narratives of the jabs and these boosters and all these hit pieces coming out again and support noy and all these you know bad uh, corporate you know run media sponsored media basically you I've been talking about this forever. Like the pendulum is swing, has gone so far in one direction that it is now, I think we're feeling the momentum of that pendulum coming down. The red wave and the red tsunami in Virginia, all these houses, it's, it's just, it's too much. The radical left, but they got too extreme. Way too extreme. And they're trying so hard still, you know, with the, the whole Sesame Street thing and, you know, SNL sketches and it's hey man, just not working. Communism is here, bro. But it's not going to, it's not sticking. Like these people aren't, for the most part, they're not having it. The moms ain't having it. If the moms ain't having it, the dads ain't having it. If the dads ain't having it. That's it, why we need to clean up the elections. Yeah. We got to clean up the elections because ain't, ain't finna be no red wave, no red tsunami. The only reason Virginia went the way it did is because they had the snitch line you know what i mean they had more people supervising some shit they had to get ahead of the mark eliases of the world you know the cabal that that came in to fortify our elections you know the stacy at what's her name stacy abrams mm-hmm. yeah stacy adams those fucking <laughs> shoes stacy abrams in georgia how she finessed some laws and shit and then the minute 
the minute Republicans say, hey, y'all got to show ID, bitch. They show that shit in Mexico. Mexico got a fucking voter ID. What the fuck we look like? We supposed to be a superpower. We doing everything ass backwards. And they're like, that's because you're racist, sir. You, Everyone, we have a white supremacist over here who's trying to undermine the brown and the Latino vote and the black vote. And black people are like, we have no problem showing ID. We think that's a good idea. Um, <clears throat> We have a black face of white supremacy. So... Back to communism and Sesame Street and Big Bird. <laughs> what a sentence. Um, exactly, bro. <laughs> First of all, defund, defund the media. Perhaps defund PBS. Perhaps defund Sesame Street. I know some people are like, Chingo, Big Bird's been pushing the jab since the 70s. It was other jabs. and it, uh, 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 uh. Those are real jabs. Those work. Back in the day, the, the definition of vaccination was it's something they put in you and now it prevents you catching the thing. Which they said at the beginning of this, that, that also would do the same thing. That was the definition up until recently, 1984. Um, double speak, double think, uh, fucking thought police. Now it's like, uh, we're going to go ahead and update, you know, Webster <laughs> Dictionary. I guess if you got enough bread, you can update fucking definitions. <laughs> Lo and behold, now... Of the definition of vaccination is something that just might help a little bit. And then they changed it again. How much did they pay Miriam Webster to change that definition? You know? I don't know, man, but they keep changing it and changing it. Not only the definition, though, but the actual, we, there's the receipts are out there where they said, this administration said, or what, whichever federal the agency, regime. the regime said that once you got these, I mean, the prime one at the beginning, you would not get it. All right. Now you got goofy motherfuckers wearing masks. Boy, you done... How many... You done got all your boosters. Go ahead, Rob. Well, because I want to play those clips and we're going to wait till the end, guys, to not break up the flow of the other topics, I do want to... I want to give this little caveat or this little preface, that conversation that we'll have later with this Freedom of Information Act email that was replied to by the CDC from... And I saw this on Twitter. I, just, I had to screenshot it because it was really interesting because it was... Uh, there were People were going back and forth. I don't know if it was a libs of TikTok, but it was, it was a thread. It might even have been a Tim Dillon thread, but... The comments sometimes are just too good to not read, right? So somebody replied back the natural immunity conversation or the natural immunity point in the FOIA request. The CDC admits that there's no documentation of unvaccinated COVID-19 recovered people spreading COVID-19, all right? Whereas now we're having all these breakthrough cases of people that have had it, right? You know, even going to the hospital, even severely, you know, ill, even some passing away. Mm -hmm. So here's the email from uh, the Department of Health and Human Services, all right? This is from DHHS. The Center of Disease Control Prevention and Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry received your September 2nd Freedom of Information Act request on September 2nd, 2021, seeking, this is what the person who filed the request was seeking, documents reflecting any documented case of an individual who won never received a COVID-19 vaccination, you and I would qualify as that, mm -hmm. were then infected with COVID-19 once, I guess I would because I had the antibodies and I never knew it, recovered, I guess I did because I never knew it, and then later became infected again, and then three, transmitted SARS-CoV-2 to another person when reinfected, okay? That's what they were requesting. Our search and our records, the CDC said, failed to, re uh, to reveal any documents pertaining to your request. The CDC Emergency Operations Center conveyed that this information is not collected <laughs> they playing games with y'all man that's what it is bro. they don't even collect that information so if you were to ask them if you were to, to submit a FOIA request for that you didn't get the jab you've had it you recovered are you spreading it oh well we don't collect that information that's very convenient they playing with y'all it's all they're, they're utilizing this virus they're using it they're using it for whatever means they want to accomplish. When all this shit first started, it was about 14 days. And man, look, you essential. And don't worry, it's just it's just a mask. And it's just this. And it's just churches. And it's just gyms and bars. And it's just this, just that. Now, they like, bitch, if you ain't got it, you can't be a nurse. Bitch, if you ain't got it, you can't be a pilot. So on and so forth. You know what I'm saying? Can't get yogurt. You, bitch, if you, I don't give a damn... Well, L.A. was on some, I don't give a damn, you five years old, little boy. You better pull out your motherfucking medical records right now, because this is Newsom Town, and we ain't playing that shit. Mayor oh, Gar dude, we, have we, we haven't talked about that. Where has he been? What happened? That boy missing in action, bro. He got his booster and went to missing. Yeah, what? I wonder where that guy's been. I got a ton of people, because, you know, you're out of town. We, this happened after, I guess, you had left, and we haven't recorded since, but... 
Yeah, and then his wife tweeted like, you know, just because you know the governor wanted to go trick or treating, or just because he canceled one little event, and just because you ain't seen, and then she had to delete that shit she did. right after. <laughs> so now it ain't even really about it, it. Like it don't went from hey, I don't give a damn if you sick or not. Everybody got a lockdown. It went from that to we about to do it again but we're going to use climate change as an excuse. And by the way, you better have this passport in your motherfucking phone. And by the way, we finna censor you. Now we could just label whatever we don't like. We'll just label it misinformation. So it's like Pitbull said, it smells like communism. Yeah. It's starting to smell like communism because all of a sudden one party is starting to dictate what you can see. You know, big tech, they helping them out. They hiding the laptop story. The feds. The feds are being weaponized. Boom. They kicking down the door. Of Project Veritas. They going looking for diaries. And let me give me your phone. We want to see who are your sources. What do your notes say? What y'all doing over here? And it was Biden. Biden told Merrick Garland at the DOJ, you better go get them boys, Project Veritas. And it's like, damn, whatever happened to the uh, free press? Whatever happened to journalists having the right to fucking investigate some shit yeah not in this country motherfucker i do want to go back to a point you made earlier too when we were talking about um you know the elections you know we were talking about the red wave and somebody made a good point i was listening to somebody i can't remember who it was and they said you know if we look at virginia trump was very quiet when that that race was going on he didn't he wasn't in the spotlight he wasn't talking about you know uh, election integrity he wasn't talking about not going out there and voting because these votes aren't going to count basically what happened in georgia Never should have lost those two Senate seats, but because Trump said, "Don't, we're not going to go vote because they don't, you know, whatever, you, you can't trust them or whatever, and then they lost both of those seats. In Virginia, he stayed quiet, stayed low. You know, Yunkin didn't didn't necessarily piss off the MAGA but people. He, but he did call in to a rally. He did, yeah, yeah, yeah. but so he wasn't he, silent. He did a, cu- a few things. Yeah, and then Yunkin also, he didn't, like, dismiss Trump, and he didn't upset the he, MAGA people. Yeah, he was trying to, like utilize the base but, yeah. also, but also distance himself at yeah the same time. because that would obviously rile up the other side and maybe we'll see we would see what happened in georgia or, or federally right so i'm not saying that it's not there we obviously have seen it we've seen people report on this stuff it's happening this harvesting you know rain uh, uh getting shut down and caught all, all over the country so it's not that it's not happening but to think that in 2024 he's going to run on that same thing i don't know that that's a good idea You're talking about trump yeah run on what stolen election stolen election like it, it'll be four years removed from that. I don't know that that'll, that's going to drum well, up enough for a win. Bro, he's got so many things he could just pick from. You're right. He could I just, mean, the board, he, he could just, just throw pick. a rock. He could just throw a rock, hit an issue that Americans give a fuck about. You're absolutely right. Bro, um, American Cholo, Gil. Yeah. Gil at American Cholo. Uh, I had gone on his show. Whew. When was that? Was that, that was this time last year. This time? Yeah. In November? It was like, well, it was a little bit after, probably before inauguration, yeah. Okay, so I don't really recall the exact the exact time. But he's like, hey, do you want to come back on and do a, a catch-up recap? And just, you know, we could talk about how this administration is panning out and what how they're messing up. Yeah. How do you yeah. feel about that? About what? About that, that invite to, to go back and... I'm down to go on because I actually want to do like a media run kind of like kanye in other words you know sure i'm sure we have some new listeners that are sampling that are just like let me see how i'm gonna disagree you know people that might be like let me see what this coconut sell out sure it's saying over here with his white supremacy he's got plenty they got plenty in this first 40 minutes i mean i ain't say nothing uh (laughs) you would think yeah y'all can misinterpret it how y'all want but guess what communism ain't what it is bro if y'all like that shit Take your ass on over to Venezuela and and, and buenos buenos noches and <laughs> motherfucking good riddance and good luck. Yeah. But anyway, um, I'm down because I need to be reaching different people that and and let them know. Go sign up to the newsletter. Mm-hmm. Listen to the podcast because there might be some people that are like, you know what, Chingo. At first, I thought you were tripping, but you know what, I realized that the media had me under a spell, mm-hmm. and now. I can kind of see some of the stuff you were saying coming true. I'm glad you said that too, because I wanted to bring that up after you finished this Thursday show and like you were done for 2021 and, and try to figure out how we could do like a media run, whether some of it was Skype, like with Gil or, or Zoom. Yeah, yeah, a lot of Zoom. Or yeah. others being like, we try to go up to Dallas and see what's up with Louder with Crowder. We try to like set something up with Chad Prather and those kind of communities between like New Year's and the 2022, 2022 tour. What do you think about that? Uh, yeah, I'd love to. Um, I just don't know how I could um, 
pitch myself or position myself so that they see it as like you know what this is an interesting story we'll you know figure that saying? out yeah yeah for sure we'll figure that out yeah <clears throat> so interesting times um i guess we were talking about kyle but uh it yeah turned, it turned into it turned into a lot of uh, different it turned things into communism is here <laughs> and don't fall for the okie doke so so basically man the media let, let, maybe we should summarize kyle right okay because tonight the verdict drops perhaps kenosha will con- will fucking burn again mm-hmm. all thanks to the media and their lies um it's unfortunate that one half of the country looks at this as kyle rittenhouse is against blm He's against Black Lives Matter. He he's for police brutality, and he was out there uh, when people were protesting Jacob Blake, the you know the the rapist guy that the let his ex called the police on him. He, he, was he the had kids. a knife. He had the kids in the back seat. Yeah, they told him put the knife down. He lunged back in the car, turned around real quick, got his ass shot. Right. What did you think was gonna happen? That's what you call suicide by cop. Mm-hmm. Go at a cop with a knife. And they telling you put the shit down. And then I'll give you two guesses what the fuck gonna happen. Same outcome. Either you shot or you dead. Um, so tonight is a verdict. The media is the enemy of the people. They've painted this little boy as a white supremacist and as an active shooter. However, the other half of the country looks at it like, well, okay, yeah, he's 17 years old. Yeah, he had an AR. But if you look at the footage and eyewitness testimony and everything yeah. else... They were chasing him. He's trying to get away. One of them jumped, kicked him. The other one swung at him with the fucking um, skateboard. The other one lunged at him with a gun. And how many people got shot? About three? Uh, yes. He had to pop about three of you pedophiles. Uh, a lot of the testimonies were really interesting. A lot of the, the, the people that were defending Kyle. And Drew Hernandez is one of them. That was really oh, interesting. Oh, that was great. He was on Tim Pool last night. That was night. great. Hell yeah. And um, if you watch the whole thing... You could tell that, Bing, you know, Binger, I mean, they did this the entire time. Like, there's clips everywhere of the judge having to scold Binger for saying something he wasn't supposed to, bringing something out of context, uh, questioning, the, like, Drew is one of them. Like, what is this? Where is this? I don't understand where this line of questioning is going kind of thing. Yeah. It was a very weak argument. And, uh, you know, Drew was on Tim last night kind of talking about it all. And it, he and a bunch of other people have made a really good point where, aside from what Kyle did and what this is going to mean for this kid, it's also an attack on your Second Amendment. So if you follow self defense, self defense, yeah. guns in general, uh, more states wanting to pass constitutional carry, all that stuff. This is this is what the conversation really is. Self defense is on trial. Yeah. So I don't give a damn if you black, yellow, brown, blue stripes or polka dots. Depending on this verdict, it may set a precedent. And God forbid you ever end up in a situation where you have to resort to self-defense, pop a motherfucker, and then, you know, depending on how they do Kyle, that might be how they try to do you. And it really sucks when the media and big tech are sticking their fucking grubby little fingers in the way. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Trying to shadow ban the mom. They can't collect money for the lawyer fees. Um, He can't get a GoFundMe going. It's like, damn, everybody else could. Yeah. Everybody else, everybody else in their mama was entitled to GoFundMes and have a motherfucking fan page, whatever, uh, group pages or a Twitter, like Free Kyle or Kyle is Innocent. Let's not forget that dude that was part of the, you know, the the one six that got paid by CNN for the footage, right? They got bailed out by a lot of the, the left groups. The kid from Utah. What the fuck? Yeah, something Sutton. The yeah, Sutton the, kid. The kid from Utah. I will be in Salt Lake. Yeah. Tomorrow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. For sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. That's really what's on trial, self-defense. So, your boy Francis O'Rourke announced he's going to run for governor. Yeah, man, your let's boy. Let's look at some of these comments. Let's let's play the video, and then uh, we'll read the comment section. Beth O'Rourke, he done ran for president. He done ran for senate. What else did he run for? Uh, he, Congress, I'm sure. I think he was a congressman for a little bit. I'm running for governor, <laughs> and I want to tell you why. This past February, when the electricity grid failed and millions of our fellow Texans were without power, which meant that the lights wouldn't turn on, the heat wouldn't run, and pretty soon their pipes froze and the water stopped flowing. They were abandoned by those who were elected to serve and look out for them. It's a symptom of a much larger problem that we have in Texas right now. Those in positions of public trust have stopped listening to, serving, and paying attention to, and trusting the people of Texas. And so they're not focused on the things that we really want them to do, 
like making sure that we have a functioning electricity grid or that we're creating the best jobs in America right here in Texas or that we have world-class schools or that we make progress on the things that most of us actually agree on, like expanding Medicaid or legalizing marijuana. Instead, they're focusing on the kind of extremist policies uh, around abortion or permitless carry or even in our schools that really only divide us and keep us apart and stop us from working together on the truly big things that we want to achieve for one another. It's a really small vision for such a big state, but it doesn't have to be that way. And I know that together we can get back to being big again because I saw that in February when the electricity grid failed and those in power failed all of us. It was the people of Texas who were willing to put their differences behind them and get to work doing the job at hand which meant helping our fellow Texans get through that crisis. We did this out of a sense of duty and responsibility to one another. Now imagine if the governor of Texas felt that same way. Well, there's something that you and I can do about that. I want you to be part of this campaign. And whether that begins today with a campaign contribution or signing up for a volunteer shift or just committing yourself to talking with your friends and family about how important this election is, I want you on the team and I wanna win this with you and for you and for all the people of Texas. I'm looking forward to seeing you out there on the campaign okay, trail. Stop. Thank you. Hit the thumbs down real quick before you forget. <laughs> Hit the thumbs down. Okay, bet. So, Bethel Newsom, um, <laughs> I want to hit. Okay, you done skipped over a whole bunch of shit, Bethel. Number one, how are you going to fix this uh, electrical grid? I would love to hear a lefty's uh, response to that. Like, You're right. Before you even get to that, though, what did he leave out? Uh, CRT, vax mandates. What are you going to do about all that? What you doing about the border? <laughs> he left the border out. I mean, the border. Of course you can't talk about that, Bethel, <laughs> because you're a leftist. You're a leftist. You're going to be for open borders border, and cheap yeah, labor for big town, corporations. But, uh, Texas cities want to hear uh, open borders, right? Because that's what he, he said. Just like he said, we'll take your guns. He has said that in the past as well. We're going to open up the borders. Open borders. Nah, cuz uh, people not fl- people not going for that, especially La Raza of South Texas, Del Rio, Eagle Pass. They done got a belly full of this shit. They done had so many Haitians at the Stripes gas station. They didn't know what the fuck was going on. They thought they was in Little Haiti, Sac Passe. So, <laughs> so here here's the thing, um, Beto. I would love this is you know what this is gonna be great fodder for the RPT show because I would love to hear. Okay, answer some of these tweets or some of these comments. I'm sure they're going to be asking about, what about CRT in our schools? Are you going to ban it? Of course not. You're a fucking leftist. You're probably a neo-Marxist or a cultural Marxist or a trained Marxist. You're probably all for equity. We're here for equity. You know, you know we need to teach that the 1619 Project and 1776 is racist and white people are bad. Um, yeah, there's a lot. He sounds like a hipster that smokes a lot. That kind of that's kind of his voice a little bit. <laughs> Let's go through some of the comments, man. Just kind of just a few of them here. Read them for me. LOL. Never tired of taking L's. Uh, show us your knee pads, Bethel. Uh, when you lose for the third time, will you finally take the hint and go pound sand sil- <laughs> silently away from the rest of us? I'm going to take people's guns away. Yes, go with that and see how that plays in Texas. Is there a third candidate like a furry? <laughs> Uh, okay, let me skip. Uh, this is where the fun begins. Imagine how hard this video would get ratioed if if the dislikes were still shown. Beto at the top of the ticket is going to completely wreck down ballot Democrats in Texas. It's JFK Jr. He came back to run with Trump, just like Q said. Oh wait, it's really Beto. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, current, you get the point. Current ups and ups and downs are nine seventy two ups and nine sixty nine downs. I wonder. I wonder what that will be at 5 p.m. today. Business hours for the DNC. Uh, uh, what's it at now? It's like this is from yesterday, by the way. It's more downs. It's slightly. It's pretty pretty even split. But it's only got sixteen thousand views. That's so weird. So he's a good public speaker. I mean, if you're a leftist, you're a Democrat. You like him. You probably don't know why. Like there's that um there's that mural, there's that mural over there by Eighth Wonder. I think it's part of the secret group building mm-hmm. and um I, they might have painted over it but it was when he was running against uh ted cruz right and of course republicans have gotten a bad rap ted cruz has gotten a bad rap especially since he, since he went to cancun during the freeze 
Um, but the thing was what a Bethel. It was like a Whataburger oh, okay. type of theme. And it said uh, Ted or Cruz Burger. They tried to do an in and out logo for mm, Cruz. Mm. And it said Cruz is out. And it said Ted Burger, Bo- Booger. Okay. And it was like, what a Bethel. And it was promoting Bethel and somebody got paid to do this mural and, and so on. But it's like, you know, I went I went to that thing, you know, back when I didn't know no better. Yeah. I went to that thing where they invited us and we heard him speak and stuff and uh, met him real quick. We took a couple pictures. Um, <laughs> you say it with such disdain now. It's so funny. Well, because think about it, bro. Like, first of all, the border wasn't what it is. What it is now, that's not what was happening around that time. Uh, two, critical race theory wasn't even on my radar. I ain't know shit about CRT. Um, really, all this destructive Marxist thinking, like watching Democrats turn, like ruin their states. Um, it's never been so in your face. For sure. It's for sure. never been so in your face. Like somebody like me, man, I was just able to operate, not really fully being able to dig deep into all that Mm. but now it's so in your face between like you know the the bias of the media how fake the news is how they'll put a false narrative on a ted cruz or or somebody um how dangerous is crt like i'm so glad that i'm well i'm more well versed now and being able to witness like the virginia race Mm. or the kyle rittenhouse thing or even the george floyd thing where it's like Video lies, man. Mm -hmm. I know it looked, you know what I'm saying? But, man, you got to take all this shit into account. First of all, fuck Chauvin. You know, he shouldn't have have been on him like that. But they about to turn this man into a martyr, Mm -hmm. a hero, and all type of shit. But, um, Bethel, um, guess what, man? We didn't have a show like RPT back then. So, we got a lot of listeners. Um, You're going to have to come correct. And too many people waking up. Yeah. You you can't pull that newsome shit. Do not California my Texas. No offense. I love California. I love the people, the culture, the food, everything. Uh, I love I love visiting. But uh, you can't pay me to live in L.A. County right now. Mm-mm. You cannot pay me to live in San Francisco. You cannot pay me to live in New York. There's no way in hell. And we still got a little bit of freedom left in this country. Why would I put my family through, through like, Hey kids, we're moving to San Francisco. Can you imagine? Can you imagine how 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 dumb you gotta be to leave Texas right now or leave a Florida and go ass backwards into fucking Manhattan, New York, or motherfucking San Francisco? Be like, all right, kids, you gonna see some shit on the sidewalk? It ain't dog shit. All right, kids, if you see needles, make sure you don't step on them. All right, kids, uh, daddy had to park the car in the street and it's probably gonna be broken into but hey there's nothing we could do because you know leftists are in charge and uh hey kids if we go to cvs be careful because there might be a bum in there stealing 950 dollars worth of shit and ain't nothing gonna happen because they don't believe in law and order they want to build back better they want a motherfucking world economic forum ubi and that's what they want yeah, it, it we didn't have RPT back then. We weren't even doing this at all when that uh, cruise and, and Bethel race was going on. So it'll be interesting to see how people are going to start listening to the show more because we're going to be put, you know putting out more content around that topic. This isn't just a Texas show, obviously, but that's that's a big race for the country in general to have. Texas hasn't been the Democrats haven't won, if I'm not mistaken, a like a, 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 a fed, like a statewide race in like 30 years. So it was like early 90s, late 80s, I think, that we've had a Democratic governor. Man, with the amount of lefties moving over here and with the amount of cheating and corruption, I mean, how many lefties live in Austin? That's a lot of votes. It is. And that's the, so there was two, remember when the census came out, you know, you know uh, New York lost seats, um, Florida, uh, New York lost seats, California lost seats, and whatever. So one of the seats that Wesley Hunt's going after is one of the seats that were, congressional seats that were added in Texas. One was in Houston and one was in Austin. The one in Austin just happens to be solid blue, and the one in Houston happens to be solid red. So that'll just be another even split when it comes congressionally to Texas. But you got to think too, right? People made the point that people that are leaving those areas for Texas or for Florida or for Nash or Tennessee aren't necessarily, I hopefully, well, I guess it's hopeful, wishful thinking that they're not bringing their policies with them, right? You would think that they're going to vote differently or maybe not even vote at all. Yeah, you would hope. Yeah, so that's what we can hope for. Yeah, so we would definitely keep an eye on that. Uh, we don't even know who's going to primary Abbott. You know what I'm saying? There's a bunch of people, like, who's going to get the, I guess, the ticket or whatever. Mm-hmm. 
Um, so we don't even know who Bethel's going to be up against. And then wouldn't he be running up against other Democrats to see who gets to be like the main? Yeah. How does that work? Mm-hmm. Does it work like that? I don't know who else would. I mean, I don't know. I haven't heard anybody else talking about him running for governor in Texas, Democrat wise. So to everybody listening right now, if you're from Texas or you have friends and family in Texas, recommend the show or maybe just start priming them. Make sure they're not falling for the okie doke. Maybe start to ask like, hey, hey, prima in Texas and Fort Worth or something in the valley. Um, What's up with CRT, man? Do they teach that over there? Did they ban it? You know, maybe let us know. Chime in on the comments or in the discord in the chat and just kind of let us know like, hey, man, my cousin, he lives in Dallas and man, he don't even know. You know, he he actually likes Bethel. So. I think if people really get a grasp on what the fuck the issues are, like, look, bro, we cannot give up our guns or whatever type of little plan he's proposing. Where it's like, no, we're not. We're going to just take away the big ones and, you know, some of the rifles and some of the attachments and, you know, the ones with the the initials AR. We could we could make people think it stands for assault rifle. You know what I mean? Little propaganda tricks. Armalite, by the way, if you don't know that, guys, which I'm sure you, you do. Everybody that listens. What does it stand for? Armalite. Used to be a company. Used to be a company. I don't That's know. That's what they, the AR stands for. Yeah, it stands for Armor Light. But of course, the media is like assault rifles. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, hey, Bethel, I don't know how you're going to win if you go up against the gun. That the going. And then he just mentioned, like, he mentioned the electrical grid. It's like, you never said what you were going to do instead. Yeah. What are you going to do? What's your plan? You will rebuild a whole new one? Talking about more green? Talking about going greener here in Texas? That's going to make it worse. Right. That's going to make it worse. All right, so uh, shout out to Wesley Hunt. Maybe we can get him on the show. Uh, he's going to be uh, taking on a new congressional seat in H-Town. Yeah, that was the one I was mentioning. Correct. So um, what is this right here? A U.S. appeals court on Friday upheld its decision to put on hold an order by President Joseph Raheem Breezy for companies with 100 workers or more to require the, the shot, mm-hmm. rejecting <clears throat> a challenge by his administration. Yeah. So from here, it's basically going to go to the Supreme Court, if, as I've read. So we're going to wait to have that go up. And Ben Shapiro talked about it as well. I made a clip out of that one where that'll, that'll have the final decision, the final say-so. And it'll be interesting. <clears throat> it'll be interesting to see how that goes. There's one case that I've heard people reference. It's from 1905. It's called Jacobson versus Massachusetts, I believe, that, wa- that, that gave the state the right to mandate vaccinations at the time, mm. uh, citing that it, it was something to uh, effect of like, you know, an individual's responsibility does not outweigh like the greater good of whatever, his fellow mm. man or some shit like that. I want, ain't it <clears throat> funny, bro, how, um, remember those old clips of uh, Brandon and Saki and all these people, all these Democrats oh, yeah. are like, we're not going to mandate. Never. No, 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 no. That is not the role of the federal government. No, we're not going to mandate. Who made that call? Was it President Xi? Who, who, <laughs> who, who told y'all to revise that? Who told y'all to go against y'all's word? Because at first they're like, no, 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 that is not what the federal government is here to do. No, 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 we cannot mandate. No, no, there will not be mandates. Did you, random question here on the same subject, was there a certain point that you felt they were, you know, you were trying to be very like rational and thinking they're just really are trying to do the best that they can with what they have. And they're, they're, they do have your best interest, you know, in mind. And then when did that change? I mean, so much. I mean, with the jab in particular. Yeah. Like, so like little by little, it's like, okay, so if you're vaxxed, wait, so you still got to wear a mask? And it's like, wait, now you need a booster? And it's like, well, some people are saying it's really because they want the passport, that that's really what they're going for. And it's like, are they? And it's like, oh, shit, they are. And it's like, wait, they're not going to jab the kids, right? Now you got Big Bird up there. You got Sanjay Gupta, goofy ass, <laughs> goofy looking ass, boy. Boy, they just had you on Rogan. You should have stopped while you were ahead. Right. You should have stopped while you were ahead. He over there with Big Bird. That's right, Big Bird. Your <laughs> wing's going to hurt a little bit. It's like, we know it doesn't affect children like that. Like, Luckily, yeah. Back up off the kids, bro. I mean, the flu affects children worse than that. Um, I think that's when I started to kind of peep game where I'm like, all right, Brandon, why? Like, like if... I guess to to the uh, to the average to a lot of people I wouldn't say you know not 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 everybody but maybe let's just say half the country is kind of like I can go without the jab you know what I mean mm-hmm. um, some people are like we've heard that it doesn't even last that long 
the protection. We've heard that natural immunity works better. Um, we've heard that there, are, there may be some underreported side effects. We've heard there's some adverse effects. We've seen some of the Project Veritas shit. Like, we already done seen the clip of um, Good Morning America brought to you by Pfizer. You know, dun, 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 it's the weekend, blah, 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 brought to you by Pfizer. Right. It's like, it's blah, blah, blah with Sanjay Gupta brought to you by Pfizer. It's 360 with Anderson Cooper brought to you by Pfizer, brought to you by Pfizer, brought to you by Pfizer. So we know y'all biased. We, we know Big Pharma done been sued for all kinds of shit. And you can't knock people for being hesitant. So that's when I started to peep game. And, and here we are, though. Now it's like, I want to go further. I want to make sure that all businesses with 100 workers or more. It's like, bro, relax. Relax. Because one minute y'all telling us, we got to keep y'all safe. Because all y'all unvaxxed people finna... Um, fuck up our medical system and it's like so you're firing the nurses like they were just heroes there was an article by the guardian uh it was titled how trump reshaped the fifth circuit to become the most extreme u.s court so the fifth circuit of appeals court uh is what where this case is and it it covers like texas louisiana i think mississippi and a couple other states and it's it's considered the most conservative one but there was a line in here by this the author of this article i thought i had highlighted it but it kind of revolves around how Trump uh, turned this Fifth Circuit into, let's see, the Supreme Court is no doubt the nation's most pow- most powerful court, but the Fifth Circuit, the Federal Appeals Court, covers Louisiana, Mississippi, and Texas and taking and staking a claim to be the most dangerous, uh, Ruth Marcus, deputy editor, said in the Washington Post. The Supreme Court does indeed have the last word on the constitutionality of contentious laws, but uh, bears Trump's stamp with three appointees but the great majority of the cases never take it that far. Instead, 13 appellate courts, each covering the different region, go to a ruling on the most legal grounds. Damn. Anyway, the whole thing kind of summed up by saying that it's Trump's fault that this circuit has so much power and could could very well undermine Biden's, you know, decision to mandate companies. That's assuming that mandates for the jab are good. Yeah. Like that whole argument Mm -hmm. is based on Trump is bad because Biden's trying to do a good thing in forcing y'all to, to undergo this um, this medical procedure. And as far as I remembered it, you know, working in corporate America for the little time that I did when I was younger, is that OSHA takes care of you at work. You got to get that? No. OSHA uh, is supposed to watch out for what happens at work, you know, whether you're an iron worker or you're a hospital worker, whatever. It's helmet. about what your helmet, right? You know, just getting injured on the job. You're nine to five, whatever happens there, there that's what they're there for. But this isn't the same thing. You take a poke. I mean, it's not a nine to five poke and it just goes away. You go home. They can't mandate things that are going to happen outside. That was just kind of my interpretation of OSHA when I first started reading about this. So I don't know how they're going to spin this as far as it being practical or, or the best thing to do. It's basically Joseph Breezy, a.k.a. Brandon. Uh, using the uh, things like Department of Labor mm-hmm. and OSHA as as a um, as a, a what do you call that a, a government entity who used to be in charge of like hey make sure you're wearing gloves make sure your harness is on right, Where, right. Wh- where's your helmet you know what I'm saying it went from like steel toe boots careful with chemicals to no you got to put this chemical in your body weird huh? and it's like okay but everybody is it one size fits all could i be allergic bitch that ain't our problem <laughs> do you want to work here or not and it's like um okay jab well, or job is it med- is it a religious you know like is there any exemptions mm, bitch the con- communism is here yeah we forcing you you know what i mean like there's political dissidents right now in the gulags we got our own little guantanamo bay design <laughs> we have a little guantanamo bay designed specifically we went from going after terrorist terrorists to like, hey man, you, you you know, you identify as patriot. You know what I mean? Like, does that does that like tell you that the world is like a, such a much better place that there's no external enemy that it must come here and we have, must find our own enemy within us? It now start to make you wonder about them foreign enemies, <laughs> right? It make you start to think like, damn, were all them people? They were all just uh, what's the word? Uh, the boogie monsters. They were just boogeymen. Where, you know, a lot of them were just. That's what you need in order for these, or uh, in order for our intelligence agencies to stay funded. Mm-hmm. They got to constantly have threats. Like whatever happened to the the person who put pipe bombs down there at the Capitol during like it was like the night of January fifth. Mm-hmm. What happened? To the, 
I thought y'all the feds. Y'all supposed to know everything. Whatever happened, speaking of one six, and what, aren't there cameras everywhere? What about the dude that shot Ashley Babbitt? Oh, yeah, it's a whole nother story. Wasn't I, he a uh, wasn't he a black dude, a black serviceman yes. or black agent or something? Yes, I didn't hear shit about that after the first yeah, couple days. Yeah, don't worry about that. Okay, don't worry you're, about that. You're right. You're right. Sweep that under the rug. Yeah, yeah. Here's the here's the person you really got to hear about. His name was uh, I think it's like Ray Epps. You heard about this guy? Mm. Fuck, dude. Let me Google this shit. Or you got your uh, you got your computer. <laughs> yeah, up. go ahead. What do I Google? All right. Um, head of the Oath Keepers, and then just say Ray. I'm trying to get his last name right. Did his name come up? Because they probably scrubbing him from the internet right now. Ray something. No? Wow, you're right. It, uh, it, it, the, you know when you go with something, the, the term's in there. It says Ray, but it's scratched out. Like, it's mm. not included in the... Bitch-ass motherfuckers. But, well, go, but go on. So, Revolver.News and Darren Beatty, right? They were... Uh, Darren Beatty was, was um, featured on the Patriot Purge documentary. So... Here's what got uncovered. Here's what really happened, y'all. So this J6 event is being used as this honeypot operation where they like they brought everybody in and they used it to not only uh, deplatform Trump, like he's going to make his little speech. They tried to set people up. So this guy, Ray, is the head of this uh, so-called militia called Oath Keepers, right? Is this a guy that was supposed to be working with the feds? Mm-hmm. Okay, sorry. One of them, going. yes. So... So basically, um, Darren Beatty at Revolver.News, he's the one that uncovered the whole thing. He said, wait a minute. The plot to kidnap the governor in Michigan were these little local militias. The guy who was in charge of the FBI um, in Michigan, he got an upgrade. They moved him down to D.C. just in time for January 6th. And then, and then 15, I forget what it was, 12 out of the 15 people who were trying to kidnap governor whitmer whitmeyer or whatever yeah, whitmer, yeah. in uh in michigan they're all feds so if they weren't feds they were snitches working with the feds so you got a whole bunch of feds trying to kidnap the governor of uh um, michigan yes so that was a test run and they went inside the capitol and that was a test run now you got january 6th now you got like a million people going down there saying hey something's fishy why y'all taking so long to count the votes what's up with this uh What's up with this election? You got people showing up as a protest to basically encourage uh, Mike Pence and everybody to do the right thing and say, hey, we need a 10 day audit. So come to find out is now you got all this footage of this guy, Ray, going around. We need to go inside the Capitol tomorrow. I'm going to say something. It might get me in trouble. They're like, well, don't say it then. He's like, I'm going to say it. We need to go inside the building. And then people were just like. Dude, people over there minding their business on January 6th, and he's like, guys, our problems are inside that building. Everyone, we need to go this way. Everyone, it's that way. Everyone, we need to go that way. And he's, he goes and whispers in someone's ear before they break the barricade, and he's like, basically like, bitch, it's time. So this shit was all a psyop. This is all a Bolshevik color revolution. This shit done been done before, and now you got all these people in the gulag, can't talk to the congressman, can't talk to the lawyer, haven't seen their family in a year, bro. Have not seen their family in a year. And if they're unvaxxed, they can't, they can't work, they can't get a haircut. So they they got long hair and beards. They got these white men in this Guantanamo Bay. So in 2021 America, if you are a political dissident, if you go against the narrative, you could find yourself in this situation. Now ask yourself, why this guy Ray ain't ever been picked up? Why he ain't? Why is he the only person? They just let him off. He's on his property right now in Arizona. Um, some people ran up on him in his in his property. And were like, are you an informant? Have you worked with the feds? Get off my property! Like, hey, bitch. Why everybody else around you then got indicted? All the other militias. Your militia is named as like the key player in this whole thing, and you're the only one walking around scot free. There's people up under you got more time than you. And it's like, it's all fake. It's all phony. Is it uh, Donovan Ray? No, it's like Ray... Crowell? Uh, Donovan Ray Crowell? No, Donovan Ray Crowell. Oh, I don't know about that. Here, let me go to uh, revolver.news. One moment. So what do I have to... What do I watch all this? What is this? But this is part of the Purge movie you're talking about? One second. Revolver News. Um... So Patriot Purge, Patriot Purge, they might have covered a little bit of Ray, but Darren Beatty at Revolver.News, 
this dude then laid out the whole thing. He's like, bro, the head of the FBI in Michigan got moved to motherfucking D.C. just in time. He's like, you had all these militias who, all these proud boys, all these motherfuckers is feds. All of them are informants. So we're living in an era where your intelligence agencies, they not even going out trying to figure shit out. They're causing the shit. Like, they're sitting there with the people. Like, this is how you going to do it. You got to go in here, change your clothes. You know what I mean? You, y'all going to go around this part. Y'all got to p- climb this wall. And then, there's, dude, there's so much footage of, like, people out there just peacefully protesting. Like, asking the cops, hey, man, some of these people getting out of line. They're not with us. Or you got some people getting out of line. And then the patriots are the ones like, hey, bro, we're not here for that. And then you got the D.C. police from the from the uh capitol building now they throwing smoke bombs into the crowd so now you making them mad mm-hmm. you agitating them man uh, let me go to revolver.news real see, quick see if you can find it i was trying to find this video too of uh i can't remember who made it but it was it was it basically it was a spoof of the whole fbi thing where it's these guys planning uh the the one six thing and then one guy takes off his hat he's it t- or turns his hat around it's fbi is like all right everybody you're under arrest take your hat you know or put your put your hands up or whatever and then like another guy across the table is like oh I'm, I'm a part of the and he turns his hat around his fbi too and like they all turn their end up turning their hats around they're all just informants and where was this at bro i can't remember the account it was like i thought it was uh somebody that's associated with black rifle but i can't find who posted it but it was a really funny stupid video regardless i'll try to look for it and post it Okay, so um, one second. Let me do a search on Revolver.News. Um, Ray Militia. Very interesting stuff, y'all. Like, yeah. I, I know a lot of people really, like, how many text messages did y'all get uh, when people knew you were a Trump supporter on January 6th? And when they're like, look at what you've been promoting. Now do you see? Oh, dude. Now? Now? Do, it's like, bitch, those are feds. Now do you see those are all fucking feds? To this day, to this day, I there's a there's a person who used to we go way back, said same some, here, bro. Said something real stupid, and I didn't even reply. I was just like, you know, I was like, I forgot what I said. I, I might have just not even replied back. But I haven't talked to this person since then, and it's not because I said something mean to them. It's just because I read their last message to me. I didn't care for it, and I was just like, all right, we'll just see. I think I might have said, we'll see how this plays out. That might have been the last thing I said. Mm. And here we are a year later. Yeah, I'm sure those people still don't know. Like, Probably not. Like, like my boy that I went to college with, um, he mentioned some shit. One one of my sisters mentioned some shit when it happened. Like, Dude, like yeah. oh my God, turn on the news. I'm like, what channel? Any channel. <laughs> I think um, I was here, actually. And I, I was... Um, I was go looking. I was driving around looking at some uh, food truck equipment and shit. And when that bullshit was going on, so I'm like in traffic trying to update Twitter, trying to see what's going on. Yeah. Meanwhile everybody's looking at you like you see chingo you know you've been brainwashed and this is what you believe and these you are fucking your, crusader these are your people uh like dj friends or in the comments talking about um yeah but these are seditionists these are insurrectionists and and they turn it into trump incited an insurrection and uh he now must be deplatformed and it's like bro what other country what other country they done silenced the fucking president, bro? Y'all, y'all, y'all fell for everything. Go get your tenth jab and pull out your little app. No matter where the fuck you go. So, uh, Revolver News, y'all need to work on y'all's website because it's really hard to pull up uh, what I'm looking for. Anyway, the guy's name is Darren Beatty. Um, he uncovered all this shit. Um, anyway, we need to maybe. Um, have something on the website, like as a follow up. Y'all can go check up on yeah, it. Yeah, we'll post it on the because I don't have all my names. It's Ray Epps or Ray Ray something. What's What's funny? What you know? You're saying about these people that were commenting in the comments back in the day or around the one six about like sedition and shit. And I'm guilty of this too. But I, I've always liked to like learn what words mean. So I've always jokingly said I have a more expanded vocabulary than a lot of my friends because they don't pay attention. They don't really give a fuck. A lot of them, but. People in general around the election cycle and even after 1 6, especially, were starting to throw these words around that you like, didn't know like what the what, fuck. Like, like what, sedition, right? Yeah. Like sedition and, and even insurrection. A lot of people were just, that's why everybody was saying erection because they couldn't fucking say insurrection, right? But it uh, was just buzzword talking points, right? Yeah. Joy Reid, MSNBC, and they still using it to this day. They are, man. Especially Joy Reid. It's funny. They use it for everything. There's Joy Reid, and who's the other one from The View? Joy something, right? Joy Behar? Yeah. 
it, I saw a meme where it's like two of the most disgruntled evil people in the world have the name Joy. Like they're just really bad ladies, like bad media personalities. They're just, they're just, they spew just shit diarrhea. People might think we do that obviously here on the show if they disagree with us, but they do it very maliciously. I mean, tell us, please, we, we need the feedback. Like tell us what part of what we said seems inaccurate, uh, falsified, exaggerated, missing context. Please, please inform us that way. We could better communicate Mm -hmm. because I I have to remind myself, man, you might have some sampler listeners. You might have people tuning in who don't don't pay attention to none of this stuff. And they to their knowledge. Yeah. Everyone on the left are the good guys. And these people on the right are all QAnon, insurrectionists, militia, anti-American. Like they they try to uh, sedition. They tried to do a coup Mm -hmm. that they went in there going against them like no bitch no there was a coup but it was the other way around yeah and if you're if you're a dualine poppy follower and because you follow daily caller or jorge or uh or eric or um oscar and you're because i saw on the youtube on youtube channel people were like oh, i never heard of chingo bling but i'm a fan now you know i'm subscribing now because you're, you're listening to us talk to these other people also let us know always also give us the feedback of what you know you believe that we say are lacking or need or if you want to expand upon it what I like too about the show is that it's becoming this platform where a lot of more people, and I hate identity politics, but the majority of listeners are people that look like you and I. They come with backgrounds like you and I, come from backgrounds like you and I. Going into these midterms and going into the future of whatever politics is as we get older, a lot of these people are also younger than us. They're going to listen and they're going to kind of carry the torch in a sense in their areas talking about this stuff and maybe just kind of like leaving little breadcrumbs of the information that we're talking about, which is super important, you know? Super Super, because... It's as grassroots as it gets. I mean, it's super important because what's at stake? They're transforming the country, bro. Like, like everything changed after this little bug hit our shores. I mean, everything. We're, like I said earlier, they deplatformed the president. They took away his Twitter. <sighs> that was one of Trump's main tools, bro. During, I mean, I guess the election was over with, technically, right? Um, but, like, what's at stake? People think, oh, man, Chingo, he he be talking about politics. We're talking about freedom. We're talking about rights. Yeah. We're talking about culture and free, mainly freedom. Like, it looks like politics talk to y'all, but here's what's at stake. The rights and the freedoms you don't stand up for are going to be the rights and the freedoms that your grandkids never knew existed. Mm-hmm. They'll, never know, they'll never know what that world was like. You used to be able to walk into a mall and not have to show your medical records. Well, how did that change, Dad, Grandpa? Right. Well, Mika, you know, there was a guy named Fauci, and there was a lab in Wuhan, and we didn't know at first, but people tried to, you know, Trump kind of knew. I think it came from a lab. All the people that were around Trump, Dr. Peter Navarro, he just dropped the book called In Trump Time, The Diary of of Our Year of the Pandemic, Mm. where he's breaking it down like and then on this this day fauci walks in this motherfucker that same day he got an email which we found out later that same day they told him in the email boss this thing looks made in the lab boss it might have been us boss this what we've been working on he's like that same day we over here trying to close down the airports and the flights from wuhan and he's talking about nah that ain't necessary bitch fuck you mean all right so I'm on revolver.news and I clicked the link. It said, uh, it, it, it's apparently it's a YouTube video. Maybe we talk about this next time. Farmer's land confiscated for carbon pipeline through the corn belt. I don't know what the fuck that is. Uh, that sounds very scary. <laughs> very QAnon-ish. Yeah. Um, um, well, I guess we'll segue with that into the, the final topic, which is um, this, uh, this daily interview it was it's like a daily it was an interview with dr fauci on the daily the new york times podcast and uh, it's only 36 minutes long we posted it on the what did he said stories so people that saw that maybe it encouraged them to go listen to it because i wanted people to get their i wanted people of our listeners of our podcast to get an insight into this the way Fauci thinks you know there wasn't the snippet from msnbc or the snippet from him and a Rand paul hearing it was him for 30 minutes talking about this and probably not making no sense it, and if changing his mind if you slowed it down in the sense that you maybe had to listen to a couple things over again i really am i try to here's another thing too before i get to this if you disagree with me or you if, you, if people are listening to this and you disagree with us 
and you're not missing any screws in your head. You're just, you know, you're, you're trying to figure it all out just the way we are. We want the same shit. We want the exact same things. Okay, just because we disagree on who's at the helm of the ship as we try to navigate this this world, right, or this mm-hmm. life, that's that's one thing. But we want the same things. And at the beginning of the show, like maybe the first six months into it, I used to always say, like, this is the common sense show. We're talking, we're trying to talk about what makes most common sense. And I I would argue ninety five percent of the shit that isn't a joke on the show is common sense. I think it's common sense. It should yeah, make some sense. of it is, some of it ain't. Yeah, but um, but anyway, and the reason I say that is because things like viral load you know what i'm saying uh you know uh efficacy yeah. these aren't to my to in my opinion that's not a common knowledge common sense like we, i guess i should say culturally the things we talk about culturally should, yeah like basic shit <clears throat> like you know should you have the fucking right to bear arms mm. i mean shit it's the second amendment yeah why, why are we even having this i mean the school convos the crt convos the race things the identity politics all those things the mainstream media not having your interest best interest in mind a lot of those things Sound like common sense to a lot of people. I know. To a lot. Yeah. But but once CRT gets framed to normies in the way of like, guys, it's just that they're trying to teach the kids about slavery, but racist white Republicans don't want to have that conversation. And it's like, actually, no, that's not what CRT is about. Yo, shout out. I think it was Narang Hadul said that sent me this, or it might have been Irene. I have to look. But sent me a TikTok account. That I probably won't get to it because we're about to wrap up this episode. But um, I mean, TikTok's like a cesspool for shitty, like teachers and libs. Obviously, there's that's why there's a libs of TikTok. But she just does a bunch of TikToks with showing the books that she shows her little kids. Oh, dude, it, it would it'll infuriate you to no end. What are you looking for now? What's Charlie's last name from Turner? Kirk. Point? Okay. C U R I K. I think. Okay. All right. You got some? What you got? No, no, no. Go ahead. Um, I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cue the daily stuff up. Yeah. Um, if you've never seen Charlie Kirk breaking down CRT all the way back to the Frankfurt School, Herbert Marcuse, like really breaks it down in terms of like what it, what it teaches, what it's about, what are the main tenets. I mean, there's so many like, um, I guess, lefty normie people that are just mm-hmm. like, no, CRT is good. And it's like... If you still believe that, you're missing a big, big part of the argument when yeah. it comes to what your kids are being taught. No, I 100% agree. Uh, the Daily. <clears throat> All right, guys. There's no video for this. So if you're watching on YouTube, it's just going to be you watching Chingo watch the audio version of this. But I have timestamps on that, by the way, don't I? Well, yes. What's the first timestamp? You have a six minute and five seconds where he uh, talks about boosters. I already have it there. Cool. And if you look at Israel, Mm -hmm. which has always been a month to a month and a half ahead of us in the dynamics of the outbreak, in their vaccine response, and in every other element of the outbreak, they are seeing a waning of immunity, not only against infection, but against hospitalizations and to some extent death, which is starting to now involve all age groups. It isn't just the elderly. Mm. So if one looks back at this, one can say, do you know, it isn't as if a booster is a bonus, but a booster might actually be an essential part of the primary regimen that people should have. That's interesting. Is that what you're saying? It shouldn't be seen as a bonus. It should be seen based on this waning immunity right. as part of how we think of basic vaccinations. I think when all is said and done, as we get through boosting the overwhelming majority of the people who've been primarily vaccinated, we're going to say, just like other vaccines that require multiple doses, like hepatitis, B, like some of the childhood vaccinations, that it is likely, and I'm making my own personal projection as an immunologist and infectious disease person, yep. we don't have the proof yet. The proof of the pudding will be after you get people vaccinated and boosted, and we have a greater durability of protection that doesn't wane as easily, we may realize that, you know, we did a prime and a boost 
because we were in a medical emergency, a public health emergency. We didn't have the time to do an extensive phase 2A, phase 2B study to see whether two doses were better than three, whether a six months was better than eight months. We just did with what we had. So you can go back and kind of finish the booster part of the, of the interview. And it kind of goes back to what we've been talking about for a long time. Like we're a part of the experiment right now. The experiment is right now. There are no clinical trials. They stopped a lot of things they were doing early on, early. So we have no final conclusions or results for a lot of this stuff. We see more of the myocard- myocarditis uh, videos and mm. articles coming out. It, it's just Athletes passing out, soccer yeah. players, weird data. Yeah, and we're not denying any of this stuff. It's just that they're not, it, for as much as he wants to sound that he's coming through as a transparent and I'm telling you everything, you just know that he's not because you could go out there and find the information. You could see where he cherry-picked a lot of the mm. stats in order to tell you that yep. this 30-day revolving number of percentages for whatever is XYZ hospitalizations versus vaccine, all this shit. You, we could all go out there and find those, those informations, but instead we just take what he says on New York Times. So part of the experiment is how can we silence and censor people by labeling things misinformation? Mm-hmm. So check this out, Tony Fouch. Um, Dr. Peter Navarro, his book is out. He was in the cabinet. He was in the White House. He was in there every day in the situation room staring you down across the desk while they trying to figure out PPE and why is it that China shut down all their flights um, uh, uh, going from Wuhan to Beijing, Wuhan to Shanghai. Like You can't move around freely within China. They had it to where you could fly out of Wuhan to Milan, to Tehran, to New York. That wasn't fishy. Um, but look, check this out, Tony Fouch. We done already see how this shit went down. We had already seen Dr. Sanjay Gupta over there with Rogan and got his ass destroyed because he couldn't make no fucking sense. Um, it doesn't help y'all's argument that y'all got all this weird shit on the left. All this weird, extreme, radical. Y'all got so much weird shit over there that it's like, uh, yeah, it's no fucking wonder half the country is, is doubtful and dubious of y'all. Like, nah, cuz, this shit look like communism. It look like y'all just want want to make us like China. We already know about the World Economic Forum. We already know that we're under attack economically, culturally, and information. You know what I mean? Like, like hey, I didn't used to uh, listen to Alex Jones and shit like that. I thought he was crazy, too. But uh, he lost me a couple times on some of the stuff. But, but guess what? Like, it's not a dress rehearsal. We are in the game. And guess what, man? Parents are not happy about all this jab talk for these five-year-olds. And, oh, we're still figuring it out. Bitch, get your story straight. We done seen your emails. We already knew why everybody was saying it might have came out that lab. Your goofy ass was playing Mr. Propaganda. First of all, you couldn't do shit about the AIDS epidemic, number one. Two, everyone's saying... No, we really think it's coming from the Wuhan Institute of Virology. Y'all goofy motherfuckers over there saying, oh, no, nah, man, it's from the soup. It's from the wet market. Da, 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 da. Come on, bro. Ain't nobody falling for that shit no more. That's what I'm saying. Too They're many not that's, falling for it. And that's why they're going after Joe Rogan. That's why they're calling people like you and I coconuts. Well, they call me coconut. I don't know if they call I've been me getting that since high school, okay. honestly. Okay. okay, bet. Swear to God. Bet. So you've been coconut team. <laughs> What's the other timestamp? Uh, the unvaxxed, he talks about that at 9 minutes and 56 seconds. So, yeah, man, a lot of people are still like, hi, Dr. <laughs> Fauci, not us. All right. You see that it wanes. Right. And it's waning to the point where you're seeing more and more people getting breakthrough infections. <laughs> and more and more of those people who are getting breakthrough infections are winding up in the hospital. So I think it would be a misrepresentation, Michael, to say that the vaccines don't work. I don't think we've given that the full reign to prove what it is that you need to make them work. Hmm. And that's the reason why I say, hmm. again, Come again, it's my yeah. scientific hmm. opinion and projection that boosters will be an essential part of the protection. Mm-hmm. Where does this conversation about boosting fit in with the conversation that we've all been having for a long time about the unvaccinated. Well, you know, it makes the unvaccinated situation even more problematic. Why? 
Well, because if you have a population of individuals who are vulnerable to infection with no protection from a vaccine, you give the virus ample opportunity to circulate, to infect, even through breakthrough infections, vaccinated people, and you give it the opportunity to mutate to possibly develop into a new problematic variant. What? Now, However, hold on, pause. Go this ahead. goofy ass motherfucker. This Mr. Bitch, you ain't no doctor no more. Um, okay, first of all, the inventor of the mRNA technology, first of all, big tech, apolo- I apologize. I gotta, I gotta like trigger y'all's fucking uh, artificial intelligence over there. But Robert Malone, Dr. Robert Malone, the inventor of the mRNA, if I'm not mistaken, um, he is a part of the school of thought that would say, y'all can't overdo it with these jabs because y'all are the ones creating this shit to mutate. Y'all are going to create a super bug and then we really going to be in over our heads. We did hear a lot about that a couple so, of months ago where these and uh, who was, oh, it might have been Dr. Pete Cor- uh, Pierre Corey or one of them or maybe uh, Brett Weinstein or something where they were saying that these environments could actually make a new mutation in the body or whatever. Yeah, you're going to cause a superbug. Yeah. And that's part of science, ladies and gentlemen. It, it's just funny how big tech and the leftist-run media like to pick and choose which doctors and which scientists, and they totally will deplatform anybody who promotes any other kind of treatment. Like if there's a doctor who says, hey, in my practice, you know, we used a, a combination of this, this, and that, or, you know, we, we hit them with a little bit of hydro, hydroxychloroquine, or we gave them some ivermectin, or uh, this was part of the cocktail that we gave them. It's like fucking, you know, deep platform, crazy insurrection, white supremacist, dog whistle. Not a thing about real natural immunity is also what's talked about in this episode, which is really upsetting because, you know, people really do believe the New York Times is a pinnacle of information and news. And, and some might argue that certain editors and certain people on there still might have some of that credibility, maybe one or two. I don't know these people. I don't know them by name. I don't know what they write about, but I've heard that thrown around. But, um, yeah, man, they, they just, you know, and going back to the FOIA request that I read earlier, they don't even collect the data about people like, and I'm not saying it doesn't exist. Again, I don't want to be taken out of context, but if you've had it, if you have the protection, you got the antibodies and all that, spreading it to someone else, you know, there's no, that data is not collected. So how do we know that that isn't a thing or is a thing or how do we have, how can we compare it to all the breakthrough cases that we're seeing all the time, every day, tens of thousands? I feel like that's a, that's a really important marker that you would want to retain data for. That's just me. I'm not a fucking... Not I mean, very, I'm not very well-educated guy. I mean, I know people have died, but in general, this thing is just being used. It's just being used to, like, silence people, divide people, force people, mandate people, label people, uh, force you to um, get this vax passport. You're going to see less privacy, more surveillance, more censorship. Uh, and, hey, and we're here, ladies and gentlemen. We're in the midst of it. We're in the middle of it. Yeah. And with your support, we can grow and do more. Absolutely. Patreon.com forward slash red pill tamales. But if I would believe it. Shout out to all the parents, man. Speaking up, trying to get informed. You know what I mean? Um, shout out to all the patriots out there rocking some like American flag on on your on your on your gear or a little FJB type shirt or a let's go Brandon. You know what I'm saying? Like they're really trying to bully people, bro. Yeah. They got people scared out here. To be mislabeled like, oh, that's a racist dog whistle and all this stupid stuff. Like, I really wish there was a way to just defund the media. You know what I mean? They're, yeah. they're really causing, like, if everybody just turned off the TV. That's it. That's how you defund it. Turn them, right? off New York Times and so on. Don't be clicking on stupid shit. Uh, you could defund them to where they could do less damage. Because they use they literally get on TV, you know, talk shit about the unvaxxed. They try to, like, bully you. They don't really try to persuade. They'll label you. They'll bully you. They'll blame you, uh, shame you, you know, threaten to take your job away. Some people on lives of TikTok, they want to take your kids away. It's like people ask me, like, man, where would you, where would you move to? Like, where else could you go <laughs> where if shit got really bad? And it's like, this is America, bro. This is where everybody wants to come. This is it. I mean... Only other options are like secede and we just be our own country again, Texas, the Republic of Texas, or B, 
Poland is doing an excellent job. They got tight borders. So while you have all these um, Muslim immigrants invading the European Union, you starting to hear now you starting to hear of uh, like terrorist attacks and sexual assaults and just a bunch of just bad shit. When you get this whole new population right mm-hmm. from Afghanistan and shit, you get a bunch of country bumpkin ass motherfuckers from the middle of nowhere wreaking havoc in France and all over Europe. Poland ain't playing that shit. Poland is in Central Europe. Right now they're being invaded by Belarus because Belarus is inviting, they're like a stop point. They're inviting all the Afghan, all the Middle Eastern migrants and shit. Y'all want to make it to England? Y'all want to make it to France? Y'all want to go get some of that good Sweden socialism? Y'all want to get hooked up by the governments? Okay, come to Belarus and y'all can go through here. Poland was like, nah, cuh, we're nationalism. The president of Poland, when y'all get a chance, go watch some of his clips. He does a thing where he's like, zero, zero. He always goes back to zero, zero. He loves his zero. He'll say, how many Poland immigrants went and blew themselves up in France? Zero. How many Poland immigrants are out there uh, stabbing people and shit in England? Zero. He's like, we're not the problem. He's like, we're trying to keep the problem out. He's, and then he just starts to brag about like unemployment. Basically, nationalism. Nationalism, populism. It's like Poland is an example of what you get when you fucking do your country first and take care of your citizens. Shout out Poland. I think one of the the last resorts that, not last resorts, but in a sense that you might see the United States get to is like a, a, cons- uh, a constitutional convention where you have enough states that say we're joining uh, whatever they call it. But it's like a constitutional convention where you can actually amend and clarify things in the constitution. I don't, th- I don't know when that's ever happened, maybe once in, in history, but... You know, when it comes to 2A or it comes to certain things that you want to clarify or remove or add, like that would be like if the country ever got that divided one way or the other, that's how you fucking clear all this shit up. Like, can we have a constitutional convention and we go back to 1776 or we go back to that time where these things were originally written and a lot of people seem to think that are outdated or new things need to be added or amended or whatever. I can see that happening in our lifetime. But before you and I reach our old, old age, I could see a constitutional convention happening. I'm sure a lot of people are thinking, um, thinking uh, how many people you got moving to California? Uh, move to California? Yeah. Not a lot. I wonder how many people are like moving towards taxes like New York and shit like that. I don't think a lot. I think I've heard the quite opposite, like a ton, like tens of thousands of people leaving. I mean, yeah, that should be the proof in the pudding that these Democrat governors are full of shit. How many people are moving to uh, Portland or Seattle? I mean, I don't know the answer. I'm sure there's some. <laughs> Maybe. I'm sure there's like a decent amount. How many people are moving into San Francisco? This fucking, uh, what's the word, man? Where you got like this it's like utopia, Chingo. no middle class. It's, it's, it's a utopia. Like, Come it's on. like yuppie, Silicon Valley, tech oligarch, billionaires. And then you got working class people that got out, like pushed out, can't afford the rent. And then, you, and then you're rewarding crime. Like, yes, you can break into a CVS. Yes, you can shoot up. Yes, you can shit on the streets. <laughs> yes, you can break into cars. And we're going to fucking defund the police. Please give us some feedback. Please chime in. Leave a comment. Like, also, uh, please share the clips. If you want to make your own clips, if you see something that we say on the YouTube or whatever, please upload it, tag us, circulate it. Mm-hmm. Uh, if, if something we said is interesting or we reframe things in a certain way or a different perspective or, or Distribution whatever. Distribution by proxy. Please, because we, that's that's the only way. We can't do it on our own. I'm shadow banned. I've been seeing more interaction, though, on your Instagram. Now that I told people to go in their settings and all this, and I'm, I'm trying to self-censor. I mean, it's terrible, man. Like, I wish I didn't even have to be on there. Uh, maybe next year, if I don't tour as much, maybe I won't have to be. But the point is, um, chime in. Spread the word. We, we want more interaction, want more feedback, because for all I know, it's like, Chingo, you're mistaken. Tons of people are moving to uh, San Francisco. I'd love to talk or to Or like, them. people love having their cars broken into. Like, people love when they call 911, they tell them, ain't shit we could do, cuh. <laughs> they love it. There might be some masochists out, masochists oh, yeah. out there. 
Yeah, I think well, we gave Mexicans. Mexicans. Well, there's definitely some Mexicans out there. We well, gave you guys used a, to be. a hell of a lot of uh, extra bonus content here for this free episode because Monday's uh, Chingo Chat was so short because you had to fly out that same day. So we had to yeah. cut it. It was a half an hour. Usually it's an hour plus also. But uh, yeah, we did almost 140 here. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'm going to do a Chingo Chat after this. And you got Salt Lake City. What do you got planned today? I'm going to go pick up my kid. What time do you What time you got to leave? Well, I got to leave here about three. Perfect. We'll do uh, yeah. an hour for Chingo Chats. And then I got jury duty tomorrow. Ooh. So I can't. So usually we record Wednesdays for when you go out of town so we'll do it when you get back friday sometime if you can mm -hmm. whenever yeah even if it's a late afternoon as long as you can you know bet must. I'm yeah i'm down all right cool perfect thank you guys y'all be safe peace